Now, how has Cristiano Ronaldo not made the Euro 2020 team of the tournament? The guy was literally the top scorer. He's 37 years old. Look, I'm not on the committee who makes these decisions, but something's clearly going on at UEFA. And we're going to talk about that and much more in this video. Now, if you're new around here and you like the content that you see, why not subscribe? It really means a lot to me. And give the video a like while you're down there. So essentially for this video, we're going to go through the Euro 2020 team of the tournament. We're going to go one by one and we're going to see if I agree or disagree with the selection that have been made. If I disagree, I'm going to give some suggestions or probably one suggestion that I think really should have made it ahead of these players. And I'm saying this only once. It's my opinion. If you have your own opinions, I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. So let's just jump right into it. Oh, dear God. This one looks disgusting. So here we go. Yes, Gigi Donnarumma was the keeper of the tournament. Kyle Walker, Bonucci, Harry Maguire, and Leonardo Spinazzola. Hoiberg, Jorginho, and Pedri. And to round it off, Chiesa, Lukaku, and Raheem Sterling. Now, this is a team. This is a team. But we're going to dissect it right now. First, as you can see on the screen, we're going to start with Gianluigi Donnarumma, a magnificent keeper who had a terrific tournament. He was absolutely immense. I mean, he is six foot five, so he's a giant. But in that net, He's so intimidating, he feels like he's 10 foot tall, and he really, really shone in this tournament. Coming in, he was a free agent after his contract with Milan expired, and he was really looking to show the big boys why they should get his signature. Paris Saint-Germain with the team that snapped him up, and wow, after this tournament performance, they, they did good. They did good. Now, Donnarumma actually played the most minutes out of any player in the entire tournament with 719 minutes. He had nine saves to go along with that and three clean sheets, making him a vital, vital member in that Roberto Mancini Italian squad. Honestly, no complaints here. I think he was a fantastic goalkeeper. Another shout for goalkeeper could really be Jordan Pickford. He was tremendous for England. Now, a lot of people coming into the tournament didn't think he was going to have the tournament that he had. A lot of people thought that Dean Henderson would get that number one role for England, but Jordan Pickford was immense not only in his saves, but his ball distribution. He was so good at passing the ball, finding his teammates with a through ball from from the goalkeeper position, he was he was great. And Everton, if they can get this same Pickford, have a great chance of finishing anywhere in like the top eight. But honestly, those two penalty saves in the final, you, you can't take out Donnarumma. You can't replace him with Pickford in this team of the tournament. And it's rightly deserved. Congratulations, Gianluigi Donnarumma. You were a beast in this tournament. Okay, the next player is Kyle Walker. Now he plays for Manchester City. So it's always hard for me to talk about Manchester City players, but let's be real. He showed and proved why he is the best defensive right back in the world currently. You know, give me your opinions in the comments. Do you think there's anyone better defensively than Kyle Walker? He had an amazing tournament in that right back slot. Now, going forward, uh, he was pretty poor. Only two chances created from his 353 passes. Uh, I'm not sure how good going forward he really is anymore. He is 31, but I will tell you that his pace and his recovery defense give him the rifle spot at the right back position for this team of the tournament. Now, although he didn't win any of his tackles, he did have eight interceptions and a huge 40 ball recoveries. Now his pace was immense. There were so many times that England were cut out at the back from a simple through ball. And Kyle Walker's recovery pace would absolutely save them time and time again. Now that is the best feature about Kyle Walker. His pace is just upsetting. Honestly, it's upsetting. For an attacking player, you do not want to go up against Kyle Walker, and he proved it again in this tournament. And honestly, I don't think there's anyone that can replace him. Maybe attacking-wise, Di Lorenzo was a better option, but I think overall, you have to choose Kyle Walker. Ah, yes, the slabhead. Harry Maguire was actually in the team of the tournament. Now, can you believe it? As a Manchester United fan, in the season that we've had, Harry Maguire has been up and down a lot of the times, and I mean up and down. One minute you love this guy, the next minute, all right, let me be real. One minute you love this guy, then, you know, the next hour you hate him. You think he's one of the worst defenders to ever play. For Manchester United, he's clunky on the ball. He's slow. He's lethargic. He takes too long to make up his mind. But for England, he's a completely different player. He's almost kind of a leader for this England squad. He's so good in the tackle. He's so very threatening his presence. You're not going up against a six foot four Harry Maguire and expecting to win a lot of aerial challenges. He's strong as well in the tackle, as well in his physical nature. Now he was huge on the defensive end for England with four tackles won, nine interceptions made, and 34 ball recoveries. Now he's not the quickest defender, 
but his positioning for England is top notch. He also contributed to the scoring with one headed goal from a corner, which means that slab head, it works. For Manchester United, this guy can't score a header to save his life. And even sometimes for England, to save his life, he probably would die if you know, he had to score a header. But thankfully here in the Euro 2020 tournament, he got one on target and he scored it. Not to mention he also had that thumper of a penalty in the final. Well done, Slaphead, well done. Now this next one I don't really agree with, Leonardo Bonucci for Italy. Now I understand why he won it. Basically he won it because Italy won the entire tournament. He was a very you know good presence in that back line. He commanded the back line fairly well. But he wasn't the best defender on his team statistically. Even Di Lorenzo had more tackles than Bonucci. In fact, he had three times more tackles won than Bonucci, who had zero tackles won. Now, I know you may say, oh, it's not all about the tackles. It's about how you command the back line, how you command that presence in the back line, alongside Giorgio Chiellini, who's a veteran. Now, they're both veterans of the game. They're both brilliant center backs. But there's somebody else who I think could have made this team of the tournament, controversial or not, he was immense, and that is Manuel Akanji. Now, Bonucci did have 26 ball recoveries, and I think around 12 interceptions, but ah, I still think Akanji has more of a say of being in this team of the tournament than he does. Akanji won eight of his 13 tackles and had 46 ball recoveries, the most in the entire tournament. Now, just because you play defense tremendously doesn't mean the rest of your team plays as well as you do, and they were unfortunately knocked out. So I guess Bonucci, you know, you, I guess you can be in this team. But if it was up to me, if this was my team, I would keep Donnarumma, Maguire, and Walker. But I'd include Manuel Akanji because he was absolutely fantastic. And he deserves more recognition. Oh, and he's Nigerian. I, I have to just, you know, plug that in there a little bit. Okay, now as you can see, the next person on the screen, Leonardo Spinazzola. He was having the tournament, the performances of his life. The Italian wingback was almost making that left-hand side his own in almost every match he played, contributing to two assists in the attack and eight in the Italian defense with three blocks and 27 ball recoveries. It's very unfortunate that he suffered that Achilles injury, ending his tournament early. Hopefully, he comes back stronger. Now, personally, I would have chosen Luke Shaw. I think on the offensive end, Luke Shaw was absolutely brilliant. So many of his crosses connected with his attacking players. And he was clinical when he had the chance scoring that brilliant volley against Italy in the final. Now, I'm not one of the UEFA committee members. Like I said, I'm not, you know, one of the people who makes these decisions. But Spinazzola versus Shaw, that would have been a great competition. And honestly, I'm fine with Spinazzola being in this position. Now, there's truly a lot that I could say about this man because he had a fantastic tournament with Denmark. I missed the Christian Eriksen news. That broke a lot of people's hearts. Thank God that he's okay. pierre Emil Horberg had a fantastic tournament. Three assists, 84% pass accuracy, winning one tackle and having 36 ball recoveries. He was so crucial in that midfield role for Denmark. The same that he does for Spurs, he came and did even better for the Danish national team. Sometimes you really only forget that Horberg is only 25 years old because he's so seasoned. And he seems like a veteran in that midfield. He's so strong in every aspect of his game, which is primarily his passing, his defense, his work rate. Now this next player is an absolute gem. Pedri of Barcelona at the age of 18 was keeping Thiago Alcantara out of the Spanish national team starting 11. The entire tournament Pedri was a mainstay for Luis Enrique in Spain and he did tremendously well. Now while he didn't score any goals or provide any assists, he was very efficient in his passing. He kept things moving for Spain. His link-up play was absolutely fantastic, and he reminded me, yes, of a young Iniesta. Just silky smooth. So smooth on the ball. So smooth in his passing, he rarely ever misplaced a pass. And being 18 years old, the future is very bright for this young man. Now, I forgot to mention, but honestly, I'm okay with Kjolberg being in the center of the midfield position for this team of the tournament. He was great. Three assists is more than anyone could say. I think he was actually the assist leader in this tournament. And I'm also okay with Pedri. He was the young player of the tournament, but he deserved it. He was so good for Spain. It didn't even seem like he was a young player. It seemed like he's been playing the game for 10, 12, 15 years. Now, this next player lifted the trophy at the very end of the tournament. And honestly, he was immense. For the Italians, he was absolutely brilliant in the middle of the park, playing the same role that Pierre-Emil Hoiberg played for Denmark. Jorginho was absolutely fantastic. 
even though he scored no goals, even though he provided no assists, even though he had no goals and no assists, this man had a 93 passing percent accuracy on 529 passes. That is a lot of passes, like a lot of passes. And to be that efficient on the ball and distributing to your teammates, Jorginho, take a bow, take a bow, and you rightfully deserved that trophy at the end of it. Italy deserved to win, in my opinion, but that's 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 not for this video. The Chelsea man was the heart of the Italian midfield, winning four out of the 11 tackles that he made and winning 46 ball recoveries, the same as Manuel Akanji. And somehow Akanji hasn't made the team of the tournament. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I mean, obviously it's because Italy won, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Jorginho's work rate and just his ability to make things happen for his teammates, not for himself, but for his teammates, is the reason why Italy was so freely able to express themselves in this tournament and ultimately lift the trophy. So yeah, I'm cool with Jorginho being in this team of the tournament. Now the next player we're gonna talk about is Jorginho's Italian teammate, Federico Chiesa. Now when you look at his stats, two goals and 17 attempts, sounds pretty average. But if you watched the games, if you watched Italy play, his movement off the ball, and his ability on the ball were just next level. It gave Italy a new dynamic compared to Berardi and Bernadeschi. Chiesa is a very, very direct player who loves to operate on the wing. It gives something different to the right-hand side of Italy, whereas to the left-hand side, Insigne loves to cut in. He loves to operate in the half space. But Chiesa will give you that width. He'll also give you some brilliant technique on the finish. Two goals contributed to them winning the entire tournament. Chiesa for Juventus is a huge player. No wonder he's being linked to Bayern Munich. And Juventus are basically pricing him out of any future deals. I would say Chiesa had a great tournament and deserves to be in this team of the tournament. Now the second to last player we're going to talk about is Raheem Sterling. And he had a fantastic tournament. Truth be told, for England, he did tremendously well. He scored goals in the most crucial of moments. When England needed the most, Raheem Sterling stepped up. Especially when Harry Kane didn't have the best of tournaments. He didn't have the best of times. Now, whether if that's a fatigue thing, a mental thing, or a system thing, Harry Kane didn't play at his best, but Raheem Sterling stepped up to the plate. He had four goal contributions, three of those being goals and one of those being assists, meaning that he was one of the main targets for England up top. It's a shame though, because he'd probably have a better career off in Olympic diving. The diving needs to stop from Harry Raheem Sterling. You're too good of a player to be constantly diving. Just, if you wanna do that, become a swimmer. Go to the Olympics, dive. They'll give you points. They'll give you all that you want. Not in the beautiful game of football, please. It has to stop. And the final player in this team is probably the most controversial player in this team. Now, I cannot fault Romelu Lukaku. He had four goals in this tournament on six attempts on target. Now, that's brilliant. That is the sign of a world-class striker. And Romelu Lukaku is one of the deadliest strikers in the world. No doubt about it, but there are downfalls to his game, and I'm not going to sit here and pinpoint everything that he does that is a negative, but there is one thing that he did do in this tournament that I just hate, and he's done it at Inter, he did it at Manchester United, and if I go back and look, he probably did the same at Everton. He always loves to complain to his teammates when they don't find him. There could be times where Lukaku isn't even available. He might not even be in enough space for his teammate to look up and say, yeah, you're a viable option. And when they don't pass it to him or they shoot it for themselves, he gets frustrated. Boo. I love Lukaku, don't get me wrong, but that part of his game frustrates me. Now, he did have a fantastic tournament for Belgium. But how has Cristiano Ronaldo not made it? Five goals in this tournament for Ronaldo compared to Lukaku's four? What gave Lukaku the edge over Cristiano Ronaldo? That's all I want to know. Either way, this team is brilliant. I think I would only really change out Bonucci for Akanji, maybe Spinazzola for Luke Shaw, and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo, I think, should have deserved that spot ahead of Romelu Lukaku. But I do have to say there has to be a 12th man, and that 12th man has to be Christian Eriksen. I really do hope that you get better. I know you'll probably never see this, but still, you never want to see a player collapse on the field. It's heartbreaking because you don't want their career to be over at that point. Normally when that happens, the career is done for. And Christian Eriksen still has so many years ahead of him. So you're the 12th man for me, and I hope you get better. And that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, let me know down in the comments below what you liked about this video. 
Do you think that this is the correct team of the tournament? Should it be different? Who would you include in the team? Would you take out any defenders, any of the midfielders, or any of the attackers? I don't really see how you could change Donnarumma, especially after those two penalty saves. But, of course, I want to hear your opinions down below. Thank you so much for watching. It's me, Slur Family Day. Peace.